Hi everyone, Alex here. Continuing with our Revit multi-trade course from 0 to 100. Today we're going to learn how to create custom walls in Revit. We're going to talk about basic walls in Revit. I'm going to show you all about wall layers and I'm going to give you a very good example. In our example we're going to have a block layer, we're going to have an insulation layer, and we're going to have a drywall layer. And we're going to dive pretty deep into it. See you in Revit. Alright, so now we're going to see how to create custom wall types in Revit. This type of walls are called basic walls. They can get pretty complicated, but as far as Revit goes, they're called basic walls. You have three different types of walls in Revit. Basic walls, you have stack walls, and you have curtain walls. We're not going to get into that, but what I want to mention is that these are basic walls, and they're composed of one or several layers that are sandwiched together. So our wall layers, or our assembly components for this wall, in our case, for our house, are going to be one, a CMU block layer, right? Two, a furring slash insulation layer. And then finally, a drywall layer or finish layer. As far as your CMU blocks, if you go to Home Depot, for example, you'll see it listed as 16 inches in length by 8 inches in width by 8 inches in height. But in reality, if you go to the National Concrete Masonry Association, you'll find that the typical sizes and shapes are a little bit different. So, for a real block, you're going to have a length of 15 and 5 eighths of an inch, a width of 7 and 5 eighths of an inch, and a height of 7 and 5 eighths of an inch. Similarly, for furring strips, you'll see that in Home Depot you'll find it as 1 inch by 2 inch, so 1 inch in width by 2 inch in height. But in reality, when you take a look at the cut sheet, is actually three quarter inches in width and one and a half inch in height. And keep in mind that these are existing conditions, so this will come in handy in a little bit. Our insulation is going to be housed between furring strips or between studs. So in the laundry area, it's actually going to be one inch because back in the old days, those strips were actually one inch by two inches. So the actual dimensions were one inch in width. Now for the kitchen area, it's going to be a little bit different. Why? Because you're going to be housing some plumbing and some electrical components. So for that, you're going to need a metal stud, and that metal stud is going to have a web that has 3 and 5 eighths of an inch in width. Then finally, our gypsum board. Our gypsum board has no mysteries. It's listed as half inch nominally, and in reality, this one's true to itself. It's actually half inch. You have some drywall that is a little bit thicker, but in our case, ours is half inch. So the laundry wall assembly will be composed of which components? It's going to have one CMU block layer, which is 7 and 5 eighths of an inch in thickness. Then you'll have a furring slash insulation layer, which is going to be 1 inch. And then you're going to have a drywall layer, which is going to be half inch. Similarly, for the kitchen wall assembly, we're going to have the same CMU block layer at 7 and 5 eighths, but now we have the stud slash insulation and 3 and 5 eighths of an inch. And then we have our drywall layer at half inch. And now that we know that, let's jump back into Revit. And now what do we want to do? We actually want to split this wall into two separate pieces because the kitchen is going to need a little bit more depth than the laundry area. So let's go ahead and split this wall, SL, to split. And I'm going to split it right here. And now I'm going to create a new type of wall. So I'm going to click here, and I'm going to edit the type. And the first thing I want to do is duplicate this one so that we don't affect the original one. And let's call it Exterior Laundry. I'm going to click OK. And now let's edit our structure. So we come here to Edit. And then what you have here is you have a little Preview button here. If you click it, then you have an idea on how this is going to look in Plan View. But what I'm going to do is actually change instead of Plan View, I'm going to change it to Section View. And then by default, you see how this height is 20 feet? This is a little bit too large, so what I'm going to do is change this to, let's say, 1 foot. And then I'm going to zoom in there. And now if you go back to Structure, let's take a look at how this works. So this is the exterior side. Right? And this is the interior side. So what we have highlighted right now is the structural layer, which is actually the whole thing right now because you don't have anything else. 
But what you can do is you can insert new layers like this, insert. And then right now you don't see anything on the preview because we have no thickness. But let's say we want to do our furring and that furring is one inch. We type one inch and now we click anywhere else. Now we have here our furring layer. But notice that it doesn't make sense where we created it because this is actually the interior side. So we should have this closer to the exterior and this closer to the interior. But thankfully you can just move it down like this. Boom. And now we have our structure, which is going to be CMU block. So let's go ahead and change that now. So you can click here and this displays the material dialog box. So let's expand this a little bit and let's type CMU. Let's see if we find something. There you go. Concrete masonry unit. So you can click here and here you have several properties, right? You have some graphical properties, which tell you how it's going to look in elevation and how it's going to look when you cut it like in a floor plan or a section. You have appearance characteristics, which is going to show you how it's going to render. And this is based on a PNG, an image file. You have some physical properties, which are telling you that the behavior, structurally speaking, is isotropic. You have a thermal expansion coefficient, how much is going to change depending on a temperature difference. You have some mechanical properties, the Young module, Poisson ratio, shear modules, and density. And then you have some properties inherent to concrete. And finally, you have your thermal properties, which are going to contribute to the R value of your wall and are going to affect your heat transfer through your building. So let's go ahead and click OK. And now we go with our furring or insulation. So the first thing I'm going to do is click here. I'm going to change this because the function of it is actually not structural. It's going to be a thermal slash air layer, right? Because we're going to fill it up with insulation. And then we can click here. And let's see if we can find some insulation. Yeah, this is some bad insulation. That's decent. And remember, you can always go to your thermal properties and you can change these values here. What I would recommend before doing that is to duplicate the material and then change them so you don't affect the original one. For now, I'm just going to keep the original one. Hit OK. And notice that the structural layer, which is the concrete, is the one that I have checked in. You could check this one but you can only have one of them being the structure. So the one that makes sense for us to be the structure is the concrete masonry unit. And now I'm going to stand down here in thermal and I'm going to insert another one and this is going to be the drywall. So let's give it a thickness, half inch. And let's click on it and we actually want to move the drywall down, right? Because it has to be closer to the interior side of the building. The function is definitely not structure. The function is going to be finish. So we're going to give it a finish one. And what this numbers in brackets mean is how the walls join together. It's like a priority of which layers are going to join and how. We might see that a little bit later. For now, let's just keep it like this. And let's change our material to drywall. Let's see, gypsum wallboard, perfect. We also have our thermal properties here. They're going to contribute a little bit. Okay, and this is looking pretty good. We have our structure, we have our insulation, and then we have our drywall. So let's hit OK. And let's hit OK. And now since we had our wall aligned to the exterior of the building, that didn't change. See, that's why I did it like that. And now here, for the kitchen, we want to create another type. Also, another thing to notice is that we didn't modify the original generic 6 inch that we had here, right? Now we have exterior laundry and we want to create an exterior, but now for the kitchen and dining. But since that one's going to be so similar to this one, what I'm going to do is click here and then change to exterior laundry. And now I'm going to go edit type and I'm going to duplicate this type and I'm going to call it exterior kitchen and hit OK. And now we're going to edit our structure. And the only difference here is that our thermal, instead of being one inch, is going to be three and five eighths of an inch. So I type zero, space, three, space, five eighths of an inch. And then I can click anywhere I want. Our structure should have been seven and five eighths. So zero, seven and five eighths of an inch. There we go. That's much better. Let's zoom out here. So structure, thermal, and finish. Click OK and OK. Now let's go back to this one just to check that our blocks were the right thickness. They were actually not. We have to fix that. So we know that this value here is 7 and 5 eighths of an inch. Now we click OK. 
and OK. Much better. And notice that we don't see anything here. But the reason we don't see that is because our detail level is set to coarse. But if you change it to fine, now you see all your layers. See, here's the block, here's the insulation, and here's the drywall. So now this is looking very good. Let's go ahead and finish the rest of the house with the exterior laundry one. So now what we can do is we know that these walls are going to be the same as this one here. And a quick way of doing that is you can click on this wall and then you can do tab select and now you're selecting this whole run here and you can change all that to exterior laundry and everything will change to that wall type. And then this one here is actually an exterior kitchen, right? And this is what I was talking about, that hierarchy, right? So I'm going to do undo so you see what it did. This was a basic 6-inch wall. And once we changed it, it trimmed perfectly structure with structure, insulation with insulation, and jib board with jib board. And it turns out that back in the old days, this used to be exterior wall. So let's go ahead and use this same wall, create similar. We're going to click here, space to flip the wall. We click here, we click here, and then we click here. And now finally, for exterior walls, these walls here are a little bit different. This is only concrete masonry unit, only block. Let's actually click on one of them, and I'm going to change it to the exterior laundry one temporarily. And then I'm going to do edit type. I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to call it exterior Florida room. I'm going to click OK and I'm going to modify that structure to remove the finish. Delete and actually also the thermal insulation. So it's just structure. I'm going to click OK and OK. And now these two walls here, this one and this one, are of the same type. Those are exterior Florida room. So let's create a 3D view by clicking here in the doghouse and there we go. I mean we have to deal a little bit with the height of the walls and how low they go but we'll do that later. So these are our exterior walls. Very good. You can change this to shaded or even to realistic and then you see how our CMU displays in the renderings. And also if you go around like this you can see how this has the drywall finish. Very good. So let's go ahead and save our project. So we go File, Save As, Project. And let's call it Architectural Exterior Walls. And hit Save. Just a note to say that if you're watching this, you're not currently on our BIMIT Up platform. So you may be getting only partial content. For exclusive BIMIT Up training material, you want to visit BIMITUP.com. Subscription to the website is free with some paid and some free content. We're trying not to run ads here. So the creation of the content is made possible, mostly by the contribution and support of our subscribers. So if you enjoy what we do here, please consider becoming one. You can do so by joining our Patreon community at patreon.com slash up or by simply scanning the QR code that you see on screen right now. And if you're really serious about your professional training, you can book some live training at bimitup.com or by simply scanning the QR code that you see on screen right now. Thank you and I'll see you next time.